some of the inf uh, influences regulations has had on modern day policing is um, the big thing being social media. Social media has taken over society as a whole in general, um, especially within the last recent few years, um, COVID being a big one. But a lot of it stems from, I believe, from the uh, George Floyd incident in Minneapolis. Um, BLM has a lot to do with it, especially with social media nowadays um, being prevalent, uh, especially in the younger generation. Um, society today is ran by technology. Technology is paramount in everyday life. Um, so those people that wish to express their opinions have been able to do so through social media, such as Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, anything that you can think of. Um, <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> um, with that being said, that leads to people having <laughs> biases based off of interactions through social media, whether that's seeing a post on Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. It really doesn't matter. People develop these opinions from organizations that they strongly approve, believe in. Um, look up to or influenced by. Um, so that leads people when they have interactions with law enforcement to be subjected to these biases that are being pushed on them through social media as opposed to going out there and experiencing it themselves or getting the other opinion and looking at it from both sides. Um, and it is what it is. That's, that's just the world that we live in nowadays. Um, the other thing that it has to do with on the law enforcement side is that law enforcement officers are a little more careful to an extent as far as placing somebody into custody is if they're a minority or um, whether that's race um, or uh, financial stability type of things, whether they're, they live in a poor community. Um, but also on the positive side of that, that has brought out the perspective that these things are happening in law enforcement and that there are officers, there are bad apples um, within the, the uh, career as a, as a whole. And so that's left a lot of agencies to essentially look at themselves in the mirror and disguise or not disguise, I'm sorry, discover what is wrong with law enforcement. Um, now, the next question is, uh, does bias exist with in police community interactions? Um, I believe so just in the sense that everybody, it's nature, it's human nature to have biases. Um, everybody grows up, uh, especially in law enforcement, and the majority of people that we deal with as law enforcement are adults. Um, whether that's uh, white, black, Hispanic, um, Asians, it doesn't matter. Everybody is subjected to law enforcement encounter, um, and that goes with the officers that are enforcing that encounter, they can be white, black, Asian, Hispanic. Um, it, does, it doesn't matter. Um, the big thing is, is that these people have grown up to have some sort of biases, whether that's somebody that's 20 years on the job or even somebody that's fresh and new, straight out of the academy and just off FTO. It does not matter. People have been grown up and essentially focused on certain biases and that's, what they've, that's all they've known. Um, so the big thing is, is that nowadays people have to look at their biases and understand that they do have biases and learn how to get through those and improve themselves as human beings and law enforcement officers. Um, potential strategies that I think would be beneficial is obviously more training um, for the law enforcement side of it. Um, I think with law enforcement agencies, Understanding that there are situations where officers, their own officers, do have biases, it benefits that they can look at it and admit that, yes, we do have it, and yes, we do need to change what we're doing as a culture, as an agency, um, as law enforcement agencies in general. I believe that having that training um, is beneficial. It, it needs to be a regular basis, once a year, twice a year, three times, four times. It does not matter. Do it enough that the officers can perform their duties without any biases or the least amount of bias as possible in order to, pr to produce a professional and um, legitimate product. Um, 
Also, the other thing that could be beneficial is inviting the community into the organization and understand their side of things, uh, whether that be use as a force, um, even just little interactions where an officer appears to be a little defensive and aggressive and standoffish, there's a reason behind that. The officer is looking out for their safety and the other person's safety. And I believe having the community come in and go through any sort of understanding, whether it's like PowerPoint or even uh, uh, training, a citizen can run through a mock traffic stop, a mock uh, call for service, whether it's like a disturbance, a DWI, it does not matter. But being able to understand the law enforcement officer side of these things and understand what the goal is at the end of the day for these officers, which is to go home um, and obviously enforce the laws of their state and the Constitution. Um, but I believe overall having these kind of implementations will better create understanding on both sides of the spectrum and create an understanding and a come togetherness for both the agency and the community.